So in this part of the module, I want to look at the other side of energy balance. In particular, I want to look at energy expenditure. And in this sub-module in particular, we're going to look at BMR, basal metabolic rate, the largest component of energy expenditure. But just to refresh our memories on how like energy balance uh, works, uh, remember that the three main things we're going to further subdivide them in a second, but the three main things that we use energy for in the body is our basal metabolism. So this is the amount of energy needed to basically keep our, our really fundamental body processes working, right? So when we're not doing anything, when we're just lying down, essentially resting, our basal metabolic rate, this is like helping things move around the body, helping our neurons fire, helping us breathe, helping our heart beat, that is a basal metabolic rate, okay? We also use some energy for physical activity and then for the thermic effect of food as well. So we basically get energy from the foods we consume or we get energy from our mainly our fat stores and we can fuel these various activities, right? through uh, the metabolism of fuels or the metabolism of, of lipids, which are also fuels, to help form ATP. And then ATP provides that to those two high energy bonds that when broken release energy and help us fuel activity. Okay, so just a basic uh, reminder of how energy expenditure works. Okay, so there are three main components of energy expenditure as we saw on that more simplistic um, diagram on the last slide. The majority of the energy we spend each day comes from what we call basal metabolism, right? That energy for homeostatic processes to keep us alive. We're basically not doing anything, not moving. We're still burning energy, okay? Also about, I should say it's actually like 5 to 15%, really depends on the person, but it's usually around 10% of the energy we burn every day, the total energy expenditure, comes from the energy that we need to like process food, to break it down, to absorb it, and then to like help it get into cells. Okay, so that's about 10% of the energy we burn every day. And then, depending on the person, but let's say about 30%, maybe 10%, up to 30%, sometimes more in an athlete. The rest of energy expenditure comes from physical activity. Okay, and then we can further divide physical activity into like exercise physical activity, like the, the, acti the energy you burn while you're like going for a run or like going to the gym in general, like that, those planned and structured activities. But actually what's interesting is that like most of the energy we burn from physical activity actually comes from non-exercise processes and we'll get to that in a different sub-module, okay? But in this module, I really wanted to focus on basal metabolic rate. And this is, like I said, the energy expended for homeostatic processes. So keeping you breathing, keep, keeping your neurons firing, keeping your, your heart contracting, right? All those basic shuttling things around your body, all those basic processes that are so essential just for like homeostasis, just to like keep our body in that steady state, um, allowing it to do all the things that it needs to do. Okay. In general, right, a large review from 2014 suggested that the average BMR of humans is about 0.863 kilocalories per kilogram per hour. Right, so in a just to use simple math here, in a hundred kilogram person, okay, um, which is over two hundred pounds, but just to be simple here, in a in a two in a hundred uh, kilogram person, they are going to be burning about eighty six kilocalories per hour just to keep the body alive. Okay. And of course, that is going to vary. So the authors of this paper really made a point to say that you can't just use this number. There's large variations. People are going to be very different. This is not a number that you can just apply to everyone because basal metabolic rate is dependent on many factors. And I keep saying basal metabolic rate, but technically this paper focused on resting metabolic rate. They're basically very similar. They basically kind of mean the same thing for our purposes. The big difference is that basal metabolic rate how they determine it in, in the laboratory is a lot more rigorous, right? There's a, there, it's, it's a very rigorous process to determine this, whereas resting metabolic rate, there's just like less, less protocol, 
Okay. And they're, but they're within about 10% of each other. So they're, I'm going to kind of use these terms more or less interchangeably, just basal metabolic rate. It's a bit of a better catch all term. Okay. So what I just said before applies to resting metabolic rate, but we kind of mean the same thing here. So resting metabolic rate tends to be higher for men than women. It decreases with age. In individuals with overweight and obesity, they tend to have a lower resting metabolic rate. So this number would be lower. They're technically burning more total calories, but fewer calories per kilogram of body weight because they weigh more. Um, And this is unfortunate regardless of sex, adults with a BMI of over 30, so what we might clinically call obese, have the lowest resting metabolic rate. Okay, so you it doesn't just linearly increase with with um, with weight. It tends to be higher at higher weights. The total, the absolute value tends to be higher, but the rate itself tends to be lower. So the next few studies, or the next few slides, go over some of the findings from this large review that 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 we talked about on the last slide. And basically, all this slide is showing is that for men, triangles, women are circles. In general, men versus women, women tend to have lower resting metabolic rates than men. And with increasing BMI, we see a decrease in basal metabolic rate. So look at this difference. That's a huge difference, right? Between a woman with a BMI over 30 compared to, let's say, a woman with a BMI of around, of less than 25, what we call a normal weight as far as BMI goes, right? There's more than about a 20, a 0.20 difference in the rate. So how many calories they burn per hour as, as like per their, their, um, level of of body weight okay so this is one of the reasons it is more difficult for an individual with obesity to lose weight is because they do have a lower resting metabolic rate than individuals that are leaner okay and why it's more difficult for women than men as well okay all this slide is showing is similar uh, idea but it's really more focused on age and you notice this decreasing trend that with higher age resting metabolic rate goes down a lot so <laughs> if you're watching this and you are in your 20s this is the highest that your RMR is going to be. And as a general rule, people find it more and more difficult as they get older to maintain a lower level of adiposity. And part of the reason for that, it's not just one thing, but one of the main reasons for that is a decrease in in resting metabolic rate, right? So enjoy (laughs) your higher RMR while you can, uh, but Typically, it tends to decrease with age, and then if we want to keep adiposity at a particular level, we typically have to make more changes as we get older. And this last slide just kind of puts all of those same concepts together. Okay, so here we have men, here we have women. So the the squares here, the diamonds, I should say, they represent normal weight individuals. And in normal weight individuals, we also see that with increasing age, there's a decrease in BMR. Okay, but those decreases in BMR are really more profound when we see obesity as well. So as people get older, and if they're women, and if they have obesity, right, we do see reductions and reductions typically in this resting metabolic uh, rate, making it more difficult for some people versus others to maintain an energy balance that promotes health. So since RMR is such a huge component, 60 to 75% of energy expenditure is such a huge component of energy expenditure and energy balance, what do we do about it, right? It makes sense that someone with a higher RMR they're going to burn more calories and have a propensity to be leaner, right? But how do I as an individual increase my resting metabolic rate? Now, you might say, well, you build muscle. And that is true. Muscle is part of our lean body mass, and it is more metabolically active than adipose tissue. It burns more calories per hour than adipose tissue. But quite honestly, the majority of what determines our RMR actually is basically the output, the functioning, and how metabolically active non-muscle tissues are, non-muscle lean tissues are. 
like the liver, the kidneys, the heart, and the brain, right? Yes, increasing muscle mass will increase energy expenditure. And that's typically a good thing, right? But you have to increase it quite a bit to see significant changes. Whereas we notice if we look at, if we kind of measure out the differences in the non-muscle lean body mass, we notice a huge increases in resting energy expenditure over small increases in the, the just the mass of those structures. And kind of following up on that as well, this next slide breaks down basically how metabolically active different tissues are. And you'll notice that, yeah, of course, skeletal muscle is more metabolically active than adipose tissue, but skeletal muscle um, metabolic rate is not even close to in the magnitude of the metabolic rate from all of these other organs. And they actually believe that one of the reasons why metabolic rate decreases with age is the activity of these organs decreases with age as well. Okay, so I'm not saying don't build muscle mass to, to improve your metabolic rate. Of course, that is an avenue. But what I'm actually really arguing is that a lot of metabolic rate you can't do much about. You can't like <laughs> make your liver bigger. You, like, <laughs> you shouldn't try to make your liver bigger. You shouldn't try to make your heart bigger. You know, there's complications from that. What determines the mass of these organs and the metabolic activities of these organs is largely genetic in nature. It largely has to do with, with your parents, right? And what you have, have, have gotten from them, right? So what else I'm trying to argue here is one of the main reasons why it's so difficult for some people than other people to lose fat mass from the body, and it's easier for them to gain fat mass on the body, is because they're just not burning as much. Why are they not burning as much? the large part has to do with what they were born with and the metabolic activity of their body that you know they have no say in of course increasing muscle mass plays a role yes it does but not so much of all of not not as much of a role as what you have been kind of born with based on you know your genotype being expressed okay so keep that in mind of why it is easier for some people to burn through calories than others and kind of on the other side of this as well you might be someone or you know someone that has a really hard time putting on fat mass they want to gain weight and they have a really really hard time and every time they eat something it's like it's almost gone and there's a good chance that they are just they just have a more metabolically active body right that's not their fault <laughs> it's what they were born with and that's something that's always going to make it a bit more difficult for them to add fat mass to the body. Although they can always increase their skeletal muscle mass. There are genetic limitations that we have to keep in mind here, right? And since this is such a large aspect of energy expenditure, I'm not surprised that there are such variations in body mass in, in humans. So in the next couple of submodules, I want to look at the more controllable aspects of energy and spend expenditure the modifiable one in particular um, activity physical activity and i'm also going to look at something called the thermic effect of food which accounts for about 10 percent of energy expenditure so i'll see you in the next unit